I realize that I have not done a discussion video. Fuck you, phone! Stop it! Stop it! I realize that I have not done a discussion video in a long time. It's been a while. I've been a little bit busy with life, with work, you know, etc. But it happens. Uh, first and foremost, I want to apologize to those of you who enjoy the things that I put here on the internet. I'm sorry, I just haven't had time to do a proper video. Um, you know, occasionally I'll do an off-the-cuff thing, but me bitching about my Joy-Con, which became my Joy-Cons, and, uh, you know, doing videos where people send me things isn't really the content you subscribe for. You want to hear me talk about stuff, I'm sure. So, you know, when it comes down to it, I, uh, I'm sorry. I also want to apologize if I sound like crap because sinuses have been kicking the shit out of me for a little while now and I don't feel too great. But I have an off day and I have time and I'm going to talk about something. Something that I can't currently play because my Joy-Cons are on their way to Nintendo to be fixed. Yeah. Ugh. Everything's draining. I sound like shit. Anywho, today we are going to talk about... So I reach down here. We're going to talk about The Legend of Zelda... Breath of the Wild on Nintendo Switch. I love this game. It's not perfect. It has its issues. But I love this game. As of right now, I have yet to beat it. It is a huge game, and I've been playing it on and off since I acquired it. But, for those of you wondering, right now I have defeated all four of the Divine Beast dungeons. I have obtained the Master Sword. I have recovered all of Link's memories. Thank you, Kevin, for that map. How hard is it, Nintendo, to release a map that just says, Hey, here, go to this spot. There's a little dot right here. Go there. Uh, anywho, I have done all those things, and I am now prepared to face Ganon. But I can't do that yet, because the Joy-Cons, again, are on their way to Nintendo. They are not locking in the dock like... They're not locking in the uh, Switch like they should, the tablet. And... Uh, Hopefully they'll fix them, or give me some new ones, or do something. I do have, as I reach down here again, I do have a wired controller, and I've had subscribers, you know, oh, you're just being paranoid, Brett, play in the dock. I refuse to use the dock. The reason I refuse to use the dock is because I cannot describe to you adequately how unnaturally hot the thing gets. It... It gets so hot, it does not vent right. Something is wrong. Either a design flaw or a personal flaw with my system, I don't know. It doesn't vent properly. When I play it in the handheld mode, it's great. There's nothing wrong with it. It has it has its little vent on the top and the two on the back, and it vents just fine. When it's in that stupid fucking plastic shell, I don't know if you can see this right there, it does not vent right. And I don't trust it. I'm not going to have my $300 fucking Switch melt because, oh, Brent wants to get an hour in with Zelda. And he has to play in docked mode. Fuck that noise. Anywho, I want to talk about Zelda. Because this game... I, I, had, I had so many problems with the Wii U. I had so many issues. I never had a whole lot of fun with it. But the Switch, infinitely better system. I'll, I'll talk about the Switch in due time as well. Don't worry. I still need to talk about the 3DS. The Switch is an infinitely better system, and I've had so much unbridled fun with Zelda. It's ridiculous. Again, the game's not perfect. It has its issues. There are things I'm going to go over in this video that Zelda fanboys will be like, You're wrong! I can't believe you said that! But there's also so many amazing things about this Zelda that I absolutely love. So I just wanted to take this time to talk about Zelda. I'm going to be doing this video, and what I'll do is, after I get my Joy-Cons back or get a Pro Controller or some way to fucking play Zelda, and I eventually need to start Xenoblade 2, um... After I have beaten Zelda, I'll make another video, and I'll talk about what I think about the uh, the experience from there on out, having completed it. I don't have any of the DLC yet. I might purchase the DLC so that I can play with some of the extra things and experience some of the stuff that the DLC is supposed to bring. Like, for instance, it's supposed to flesh out the champion's backstories. But we'll see what I think of Zelda after completing it and possibly playing the DLC. Right now, I just have the vanilla game, and I've played it all the way up until the point where I need to storm Hyrule Castle. But I'll do two videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about different things. I may talk about spoilerish content, and since I don't like to edit, what I'll do for you guys is I'll just have you mute the video while my hand is up. And when I put my hand down, you can unmute the video. But um, I want to talk about Zelda. 
and I want to go over the different things that I've enjoyed with it. For instance, I want to talk about, you know, the world. I want to talk about the characters and the story. I want to talk about the gameplay. There is a lot to love about this Zelda. There's also a lot of problems with it as well, and I'll go over those, but I can't stress enough how good this game is. If you have a Wii U or a Switch and you don't have a copy of Breath of the Wild yet, you're missing out. Plain and simple. But I'm going to talk about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild now, and hopefully you guys will get something out of it. And hopefully the Nintendo fanboys will be gentle with me, because anytime I talk about Nintendo, they lose their fucking minds. But I'm going to say a lot of positive shit. But there's also some negatives to go over. So yeah, let's talk about Zelda. First and foremost, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a massive game. For the first time in a long time, I mean, there have been, you know, open world style games before when we had, you know, much older titles like the original Zelda and Link to the Past. But for the first time in a long time, Zelda is truly open world. As soon as you leave an area called the Great Plateau, you can pretty much go anywhere you want. And the world is massive. It's a big ass world. Like, when I compare it to other games, like, if I just compared it, probably not compared to the dungeons and stuff, because there's a lot of little dungeons you can go through, but let's just compare it to the open world of, say, Skyrim. It's bigger than Skyrim. It's way bigger than Skyrim. It is a huge world. I remember when I first started it up, I, I, I booted it up and I, um, I, I started, uh, you know, playing around and moving around and then I opened my map and I saw that, oh, okay, that's a big area. I didn't know that I was just on a place called the Great Plateau, which is this big little spot that's just in the middle of this huge fucking map. But it's a huge world and you can pretty much go anywhere you want, albeit you have to worry about the elements now. For instance, going to the arid and frigid deserts of the Gerudo place, you have to worry about the heat and you'll exhaust yourself and you'll take damage. Or going to the icy tundra of, you know, the mountaintops, you'll freeze to death. And I don't really need to explain it, but if you go to Death Mountain, you will fucking catch on fire. So, you either need protective gear or fire potions because you will catch on fire. But it is, it is impressive what they've managed to do with this Zelda, with this huge open world. You have... So many places to go, so many things to see. You have wildlife to hunt. You have, uh, you know, resources and flowers and mushrooms to collect. You have, you know, uh, you, you've got, you know, pockets of enemies. Like, they're not necessarily dungeons, but they're little camps with enemies. And you can beat them all and get a chest. And it's, it's just really fucking interesting. You have so many different places and different, you know, styles of uh, terrain to go over. You've got the plains that are in the middle where the Hyrule Field would be. You've got lush forests and jungles you've got you know there's this beautiful area with waterfalls you've got again the icy tundra you've got the 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 arid deserts there is a lot to see in this zelda and i've had so much fun just roaming around and enjoying it this is a very large game with a lot of places to go and a lot of things to see however i do have a bit of a negative as far as the open world and its density. I know this is going to hurt people's feelings. Let me get the entire thought out of my mouth before you type up a comment. Sometimes it feels like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a little scarce on its population. What I mean is, to my knowledge, if I'm wrong, please let me know some places I've missed. It is a big world. I could have missed something. To my knowledge, the places where you will find a populace of NPCs is at any stable, which there are a lot of them. You'll find stables all across Hyrule. You have Kakariko Village, Hatino Village, if I said that right, Zora's Domain, the Gerudo City, you have R Ruto Village, and Goron City. If I get those right, yeah, the, the Rito, Ruto Village, the Bird People Village, the Goron Village, the Zora Village, the Gerudo Village, and two Helion Villages and a bunch of stables. That's the only place you find people. And I found it a little disappointing. If I've missed something, let me know and I'll go explore when I can. The, the two Helion Villages are towards the bottom right of the map and you have the other places scattered around. Of course, the Gerudos are in the desert, the Zoras are in a watery area, the Gorons are where the Gorons always are. 
I found it a little disappointing that there aren't more cities or more towns to explore. And I understand that this is a world that has been ravaged by Calamity Ganon for a very long time. And it was an interesting touch finding destroyed villages. I remember I was on horseback going through this icy winter wonderland and I stumbled across a destroyed village. There's bombed out houses, there's, there's remnants of battle, and there's monsters just hanging out there. That was an interesting touch. But I felt like there needed to be a lot more places where people lived in this, this, this world. That's just my personal thoughts. I don't know what kind of horrific things have happened since Calamity Ganon appeared. Obviously, Zelda's been holding him back, but the monsters run rampant everywhere, and there's guardians, and there's there's the, the divine beasts and all that shit. But I just found that the world was a little sparse on NPCs and towns. I wish there had been more of that. Maybe that's just my RPG sensibilities coming out, um, but I, I, I wanted more towns and more places to explore, more places to go, more places to buy armor and, and items and equipment and things like that. Also, why can't I buy weapons? Why I, I can buy everything else, but I can't just go into a weapon shop. Why are there no weapon shops? Put in weapon shops. But overall, the world is massive. It is a joy to explore. There are many places to go, many things to see, many shrines to collect. It is absolutely impressive what they've done with this Zelda. This is the biggest Zelda we've ever had. It is huge, it is glorious, and I fucking love it. I just wish there were more towns. The next thing that I want to go over with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the characters and the story. Here's where some spoiler stuff might come in. I'm, I'm going to talk freely about what I think isn't spoilerish, but the things that I think are, I will, you know, I'll hold my hand up and you can mute the video. Or if you don't care, just keep watching it. It doesn't really matter. Anywho, the characters and the story. This Zelda feels really fresh. The story itself is similar to a lot of things we've seen before, but it feels like this time around it does feel more like a legend than ever before. The tale of what happened 10,000 years ago with a, a, an evil force called Calamity Ganon coming forth and you having the entirety of Hyrule fighting back against it. You had the hero with the sword that is evil's bane. You had the chosen princess with the power of the goddess. You had an army of guardians, which are the Shikai machines. You had the four divine beasts piloted by, you know, the four chosen different races, you know, uh, one of the, the Rudo, Rito, the bird people, Goron, uh, a Gerudo, and Azora. And you, and you had this, this entire armada fight back against Kalan Calamity Ganon and stop him and seal him away. It's extremely hype shit. And the way they go about reinforcing it over and over again through the earlier parts of the game and through, you know, characters telling you the story over and over and over again, it really did build it up for me as something epic. I mean, for instance, who here has played Bayonetta? You remember how in Bayonetta, every time you bring down some powerful boss, they'd, they'd mention Jubileus? Well, that's kind of what Calamity Ganon became for me in Breath of the Wild. He is this this monumental force that is reiterated constantly in the story. And you get to see exactly how devastating he is when you encounter some of the areas that are corrupted by him. You see the divine beasts that have been overtaken by him. You see some of his incarnations. And you see that monsters run amok. The story this time around is super hype. Basically what happened was 10,000 years ago, everybody had this plan with the army of, of mechs and divine beasts and the, the hero and the princess and they sealed Ganon away. And it was successful. However, a hundred years ago he came back and we weren't successful. He overtook the guardians, he stole the divine beasts and murdered their champions and he has been running amok in Hyrule Castle. The only thing keeping him at bay this entire time has been Princess Zelda. She has been using the power of the goddess to keep him sealed in Hyrule Castle so that he can't destroy the rest of Hyrule. That is some hype shit. The story this time around is fucking epic. And of course, you start off the game and Link can't remember exactly what happened. He has the protypical amnesia, which opens up... Seriously? Seriously. That damn dog. <laughs> 
he has no memory. His memory has been lost to him, and that opens up another gameplay element, which I'll probably talk about later, where you go and find his lost memories and recover bits and pieces about the gar uh, about the Guardians, about the Champions, about Zelda and him, and it's all very, very fascinating. The story this time around is pretty hype. It could be considered a little bit uh, hands-off, but I think that just adds to it. You, you, you kind of like Dark Souls. You have to go looking for it. Hunting down Link's memories and learning all these different things is up to you, the player. And it was really entertaining getting to experience this story. And of course, I've not seen the end of it yet because I haven't faced off against Ganon. But the shit is hype. I don't know what to expect when I go into Hyrule Castle. I actually had to go in just a little bit just a teensy bit to get one of the last memories I needed to collect and then I, I warped out. But I expect when I go to the Storm Hyrule Castle, I expect like the epic music I heard a little bit of already. So I expect epic music. I expect to fight my way through like a horde of enemies and, and those stupid ass mechs. I expect to work my way past this corruption, get into the, the heart of the castle and fight this malevolent monster that is now the representation of Ganon. Like, that, that is some hype shit to me. The story this time around is really interesting to me because it feels, it feels legendary. It feels like an ancient tale from times past, and that's really cool to me. I think that the story is very good. It, it's, it's, it could be considered repetitive because it's the same thing over again. Oh, Zelda and Link versus Ganon. But I think it was done really well this time around. Characters this time around are also another spot where the Legend of Zelda shines. I love the characters in this game. You have a lot of recurring characters. For instance, uh, one thing, I don't consider this spoilerish, I'm just going to say it. Impa is no longer the big breasted, like, you know, super powerful Shikai warrior. Now she's a diminutive old lady who, you know, tells you the tale of what happened and then sends you off on your quest after you've encountered her. I thought that was a little odd, but hey, I'll deal with it. You have recurring characters. Obviously, you have Link, which they deliberately named him Link this time around, which I'm not too crazy about, but whatever, it works. You have Zelda, you have you know the King of Hyrule, you have the different races, and you have interesting characters within the races. You have obviously a lot more NPCs wandering around, and they all have names and everything, but the main players themselves are interesting. I don't remember all the names of the champions, the ones that piloted the Divine Beasts a hundred years ago, but I have to say, I really like all of their characterizations. The, the bird dude is obviously a dick, and everybody calls him a dick, but I find that maybe he acts that way because he's overconfident and fearful. I don't know if I'm reading too deep into this, but you can interpret it how you wish. When you finally free him, free his spirit, when you take uh, his divine beast back from Ganon, you really do get a sense, or at least I think you get a sense, that he understands his failings. He knows why Link was successful and he wasn't. He had a lot of overconfidence and he went into headstrong. And and Link, you know, Link is a much more capable warrior, even more so than him. He has his skills, yes. But Link is, of course, the one who has been chosen by the sword and he's the one that's going to fight Ganon. And I feel like the guy just had too much overconfidence and felt that he was, you know, he was the main star and it, it, his overconfidence was his downfall. I liked that aspect of the character. Maybe I I read too deep into it, but I, I really like that. The Goron Champion, of course, is the big, powerful, blusterous guy. He has his own powers. He pilots his own his own uh, divine beast, and he has he has a relationship with uh, Link as well. You know, he constantly calling you little guy, which is fucking annoying. But I get it that it comes from a place of endearment with him. You have the Gerudo Champion, who is sexy as fuck. Can I just say this? Like, Gerudo women have always done it for me, and in this game, they look fucking amazing, especially the one in the town with the fat thighs. Mm, yummy. Anywho, <laughs> the Gerudo champion, I felt like... I felt like she was... Uh, a big sister to Zelda in many instances, especially when you get to that one moment and you remember the memory of her and Zelda and everything. Unless I read that wrong and it's another kind of relationship, but I don't know if they went for that. But she is, she's powerful, she's confident, she is, you know, very, um, 
very competent. She she's kind of like the reason. She she has the word of reason throughout the group. You know, she's you know when some people are let down, like the 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 bird guy, she she bolsters them back up and reinforces that they can do this. And I like that aspect about her. And of course the the Zora champion, she's just adorable. This is something I'm going to talk about real quick, and I, I consider it a spoiler, so I'm going to hold my hand up. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, mute my video. Whoop! Mute me. This Legend of Zelda did something that I didn't expect, which I haven't seen before. In past Zeldas, it's been hinted at that there is often a romantic relationship between Link and Zelda. However, this time around, there is no romanticism whatsoever. Link is Zelda's appointed knight. He is her guardian. He is her defender. He is the one who will help her fight back against Ganon. That is the extent of their relationship. In some instances, it seems like she really despises his his presence. You know, when you get the early memories and you, you see them first meet and first interact, it seems like she's really not a big fan of this dude. But the thing that I found the most interesting in this Zelda was that Link's romantic relationship is actually with the Zora Princess, the Zora Champion, who is a pilot of one of the Divine Beasts. I didn't expect this coming, and it really endeared me to this character. The order in which I tackled the Divine Beasts was, you know, just random. I obviously stumbled upon the Zora first, and so I tackled their Divine Beasts first. And from there I tackled the bird, and whatever the thing was in the Gerudo place, and then I finally tackled the Goron's Divine Beast. But going through hers first, and seeing the romantic relationship between her and Link, and, and hearing about the Zora armor designed specifically to fit him because she loved him, was really fucking cool and it made that entire mission so much more meaningful. It was amazing and freeing her spirit from Ganon's control was also amazing. I fucking loved that aspect of it. There. I'm done talking about the spoiler stuff. But the characters this time around in this Zelda are really, really good. I find that the strongest of the characters is probably Zelda herself because she is a very empowered character. Very impressive this time around. And if I may real quick, I remember when Zelda Breath of the Wild came out, you had the feminists bitching, oh, yeah, it's another damsel in distress. Uh, Zelda needs saving by Link. I understand these dumb cunts don't even play video games, but you do realize, you do realize in the final battle, Link was mortally wounded. He had to have Shakai ninjas take him to the Shrine of Rebirth so that he could be healed, and it took a hundred years for this situation to happen. And that entire time, in a hundred years, I don't know about the aging process, Zelda has been in Hyrule Castle fighting back Ganon. She's been using her power... Someone would call me. She has been using her power to fight back against Ganon. Zelda is not a damsel in distress. Link may be the guy that fights the evil, but without her ability, without the power of the goddess, they could not seal him away. So I think it's really ignorant of these dumb fucking feminists who don't even play video games and hate video games to start that bullshit. You know, Zelda's a damsel in distress. No, she's not. She's the fucking key player. She is the Yuna of this story, and Link is the fucking Titus, okay? That's how it goes. Zelda is badass in this game. And I think it's amazing when I unlocked the memories and saw the breath of what had happened. <laughs> the breath of what had happened. I saw the entire scope of what had happened. And it's just fantastic seeing how all of that came into place. And, and, and Zelda's fucking cool. She is cool in this one. I have loved her in past games. She was amazing in Twilight Princess. She had a lot of character in Wind Waker. I, I love seeing them do things with Zelda. And this time around, she is the main player. And she is fucking awesome. If anybody's wondering what my ringtone is, it's Four Rusted Horses by Marilyn Manson. I just like it. Everyone will come to my funeral to make sure that I stay dead. I love that song. All right, so the last thing I want to go over with Breath of the Wild is probably the most robust, and that is the gameplay. There is a lot of shit in this game. A lot of shit in this game. There is some good stuff that they've done, and there's some things that suck. So, I'm going to talk real quick about the gameplay. And first and foremost, I want to mention the controls. The controls are not terrible. There's not really a whole lot wrong with the controls. But I do have some issues with the button layout. Alright, so, where'd I put that fucking controller? Alright, so, <clears throat> get your controllers, boys and girls. This right here... The click the stick. This right here is crouch. 
That's not a horrible decision if you ask me, but I do find it a little weird because this is crouch and over here this button is sprint. That's unusual. Also, this Zelda has a jump function for the first time forever. Can you guess what button you press to jump? Uh, this is a little... This little X button up here. I don't like the way the control scheme is laid out. And the ability to just swap the jump and the uh, sprint button is fucking stupid to me. If it was up to me, I would have said, make the stick sprint. So that anytime I want to sprint, I just click the stick. It would make everything a lot easier. I wouldn't be holding down a button to sprint, which would make my sprinting attacks a lot easier to do. When I approach an enemy, I'm already sprinting because I've clicked the stick. I just hit the attack button. It's easy peasy, right? Make the stick sprint make the B button jump, and for crouching, which is a thing you do very seldom unless you're sneaking through an area, which you have to, you have to sneak at least once in the campaign when you visit a place to get the Thunder Helm. That's the one time that I found you had to sneak, because holy fuck, those things are hard to kill. But, Make the, make the X button the, the crouch button because I wouldn't be using it and I wouldn't have to use it and I'd be more comfortable jumping with B and sprinting with this. Aside from that, the rest of the control scheme is fine. You use the Y button, or if you're on PS4 and Xbox One, the X and the square. Use the Y button to attack. Use the D-pad to go through your different abilities and your uh, weapons and equipment. You use the left trigger to lock on and if you have a shield, you block. You use this button to do all of your uh, Sheikah Slate powers. You use this button to throw, that's all it's for, and this button is for the bow and arrow. You just, you hold it down and he pulls out his bow and starts aiming. That's, it's fine. It's fine. But the sprint, jump, and crouch buttons are fucking shit. I hate them. I would rather jump with B, sprint with a stick, and occasionally crouch with X. I would be so much more comfortable with that. It's 2017. Just let us fully customize our control scheme. I'm sure there's somebody out there that really, really, really wants to use the bow and arrow with the right stick and they can't. But aside from that, the control scheme is okay. The only other thing that I would change, the up on the D-pad goes through your Sheikah Slate powers. The left on the D-pad will cycle through your shields, and the right on the D-pad will cycle through your weapons. Guess what the down is? You whistle. And there was one time in the entire campaign where the whistle was necessarily, ne necessary, necessary to make a character stop and go. Uh, I wish that the down on the D-pad would cycle through my bows, because if it did, I wouldn't have to go into the menu every time one breaks. And that leads me into another terrible thing about this game that everybody hates. The weapons break. It is not as awful as you first think because you're going to be getting weapons regularly. And you can increase the, the inventory size, which is really fucking annoying. That's a whole other concept I need to go over. You can increase your inventory size, but the fact that weapons break is a huge boner killer, especially when you find some good weaponry. I have found the Master Sword, and I've not used it once yet, because I am saving it for Ganon. Ganon will be the first time I use the Master Sword, and I'll see how it performs, but I've heard that even that breaks. Now, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm, I've heard that it, it breaks, but it recharges, and you can use it later. That's fucking stupid. I understand that they have these mechanics set in place. It is the survivalist mentality. But the Master Sword breaking or needing to recharge is goddamn stupid. All right, I went through the trouble. I got the hearts. I, I stood up. I pulled the sword from its pedestal. I should be able to use that goddamn thing on whatever I want to. Oh, I want to chop trees down. I want to fight enemies. I want to stick it up in Zelda's butt. I want to be able to use the sword regardless. And it irritates the fuck out of me. Not the blade end, the fucking hilt. Look at the look at the handle of the... Never mind. Anywho, it was a joke. <laughs> it's fucking annoying to me to think that this sword, which is evil's bane, like, you know, Ganon could just be like, hey, monsters, go over there and waste that sword's power and then I'm going to fucking eat his face off. That's stupid. It's really fucking stupid. It is the sword that seals back the darkness and you've made it have a fucking... Uh, a durability rating. That's stupid. It's ignorant. Weapons being able to break is kind of shit. Again, you will find plenty of weapons. You're not going to run into a situation where you're out of weapons, and if you ever did, there's plenty of stables and towns and places you can go to just scavenge for free weapons. There's stuff hanging out everywhere. And the problem I have really with the weapons breaking 
It feels like a lot of times when you find something really powerful, you want to use it a lot because it just decimates enemies, right? Like I found this great sword that was made of fire and I'm like, oh yeah. And I hit an enemy like five times with it and the fire effect went away. But the, the, the great sword's still there, right? Yeah, it's still good. So I hit him some more with it and eventually that sword breaks. And it pisses me off because every time some of your powerful shit breaks, you got to finish off a fight with some weak pissant fucking weapon. I don't even like picking up weapons that are in the early teens anymore. If it's not 20 or 30 and above, I don't even touch it because it's fucking annoying to sit there fighting one of those mini guardians in a shrine and you're just desperately trying to whittle his fucking health down so he doesn't fucking hit you with that goddamn laser again. That's not fun. That's never fun. The weapons having durability isn't fun. I wouldn't have minded if they had an economy with the weapons. Maybe you found weapons or you purchased weapons and they didn't break, but you could always like turn them in for rupees or you could exchange them or maybe you find maybe there's a quest where you go and you find this powerful ancient sword for somebody, not the not the master sword, some other ancient sword of legend. And you have the option of either trading it in and completing the quest or keeping the blade for yourself. This this would have been better to me is if you could purchase weapons, uh, you could purchase shields, you could purchase just bows, and you, you could have an entire economy based around this, but there's none of that. Instead, they went for this stupid durability shit that I've seen in survival games left and right, and I fucking hate it. It's not fun. It doesn't add to my experience. It's not as annoying as it used to be. It's, it's super annoying in the early game. I swear to God, you're going to fucking hate it in the early game, but when you get to a certain point and you're just finding more powerful stuff, that's fine. The problem is you're always going to run into more powerful enemies that have more powerful equipment. And the, the, the next big problem I have with the gameplay of the Breath of the Wild, and then I'll stop bitching and I'll talk about the things I like, I promise. The next big problem is Breath of the Wild is not it's not an RPG. And I really feel like it should have been. I don't mind RPG stuff. And if Zelda was an RPG, that would just make me love it more. The problem I have with Breath of the Wild that is compounded by the fact that weapons break and you have more powerful enemies that are getting stronger and have more powerful weapons and equipment, the problem is Link never gets more powerful. You'll get more hearts, you'll get more stamina, you'll find better equipment, and you'll find better armor. And you can rank up the armor, don't get me wrong. But the fact that Link himself never becomes more powerful bothers the shit out of me. If you're not wearing a certain pace of armor when you get hit by an enemy, you will fucking take a ton of damage. If you're not blocking with a more powerful shield, they'll go through your shield, break it, and hit you. That shit fucking annoys me. I would have liked it if every time I killed one of these pissant enemies along the way to fighting Ganon, I got a little bit of experience and leveled up a little bit. And maybe Link himself just got a little bit more durable. Instead of just having more hearts, more stamina, and hoping that the armor I bought, you know, five hours ago is enough to withstand this swing from an enemy in a new area. I mean, you guys saw it when I, when I played a little bit of it for the channel. I went into a new area, got hit, and I was like, oh, fuck. That shit happens almost all the time. And now I'm at a point in the game where I'm running into uh, color-coded enemies. The enemies change colors throughout to let you know they're more powerful. And the white ones are the most fucking powerful shit in the game. And they fucking wreck your shit. Because they have the most powerful weapons. They have the most health. And it's ridiculous to think that they're getting stronger, but Link isn't. And if you want to consider, well, you know, getting more hearts means you're getting stronger. No, it fucking doesn't. Increasing your health doesn't mean you're more strong. It means you can take more abuse. All right? There's no option to increase Link's attack power. There's no option to increase Link's, you know, durability. Like, you know, like... Uh, I just wanted it to be more RPG. I just wanted it to be more RPG. I wanted to set attributes, and I wanted to make Link into a fucking powerhouse. But I can't really do that. And I find that that's a problem, and it's compounded by the fact that weapons break, and you're always running into more powerful enemies with more powerful shit. It is straight up fucking, uh, what was that RPG that had that problem? I can't even remember. There was an RPG I played that had that problem where the enemies were always just slightly more powerful than you, and it was fucking irritating. But overall, those, those are my big problems with the gameplay. This, this, the rest of this should just be me gushing about it because I do love this game. But it does have its problems. And if you're going to ignore the problems, you're an idiot. <laughs> Aside from all the issues I have with Breath of the Wild, it's really fucking fun. The combat is great. 
the 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 thing I had a, an issue with was it's it's hard to get used to it because uh, playing for instance Twilight Princess and doing the dodges and the jump backs and everything it just feels different especially when the controls are the way they are with the jump button being up here instead of down here I always fuck up my dodges it just happens that's another control scheme issue you know well, why don't you just switch it because I don't want to sprint with X that feels fucking weird to me but uh, the 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 combat is deep. It's fun. When your weapons aren't breaking on you and you're in the flow of combat with one or several enemies, it's a real blast. Hitting these motherfuckers, knocking them down with heavy weapons, freezing them with ice arrows, burning them with fire arrows, blowing them the fuck up with bomb arrows is great. And dodging their attacks only to do a special move where time slows down and you quickly flurry at them or stab them with your spear or, you know, drop bombs in their feet because I'm an asshole. Anywho, it's a lot of fun fun to do and I enjoyed it thoroughly. The combat is fantastic. The 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 other thing I could have bitched about that I won't bitch about is that just some of the boss fights are kind of garbage. I'm not going to lie. The Divine Beast dungeons are amazing and I'll talk about dungeons in a second, but I just remembered the boss fights suck. <laughs> they suck. All right? I I can't it, every single fucking blight of Ganon is a floating idiot that sucks. But the dungeons are awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed exploring every single inch of this game. The shrines that count as mini dungeons and give you rewards for completing them are all really entertaining. Some of them use motion controls, which I'm not real crazy about, but most of them are just, you know, figure out this puzzle, figure out that puzzle, get this block to there, roll this into that. And it was a lot of fun. Some of them test your quick reflexes, some of them test your ability to use your Sheikah powers, some of them test your ability to puzzle solve, some of them even, even one that was really complicated had constellations and you had to fit the orbs into the spots that fit the constellations and it's just really fucking fun teasing your brain and that's not even counting the divine beast dungeons while the boss fights are shit and i must stand by that the divine beast dungeons themselves are super fucking cool the first one that i tackled was of course the one in zora's domain which is this massive elephant in uh lake Lake, lake Lanaru, Lan, Lani, Ru, Lan, whatever, the big ass lake. Anywho, it's this giant elephant and it would billow water out of its trunk. And it was just really fucking cool. The thing is, when you got into it, you had to activate several different pedestals. But first, you had to find a map. When you found a map, instead of having the world map in the bottom corner, you had a 3D version of the Divine Beast you're in, showing you where the pedestals are you need to activate, and giving you the option to do something interesting. You could, for a little bit, take control of the Divine Beast. The first one being an elephant that billows out water, you could make its trunk move all the way back to pour water in and turn these giant gears to help you solve puzzles. And that shit was cool. When I tackled the giant bird, there was another one that would allow me to, it was flying, right? I could rotate its midsection and I could, I could, I could get into little things and then when I rotated it, I could go to another section of it. It's just really fucking cool. With, uh, the, um, whatever the fucking thing is the Gerudos have for a divine beast, I have no clue what animal that is. It looks like a giraffe. Anywho, with that one, you could do things with its head and neck and extend it and move it. With, uh, with the um, the giant salamander, you could turn its uh, its insides, its uh, cylinder thing, and you could rotate that shit. All of it was just really fucking cool. Solving these puzzles and, and completing the divine beasts was so good. I, I couldn't have even done without the bosses because the bosses fucking suck. But the puzzles themselves were really fucking cool and I enjoyed them thoroughly. Exploring the Divine Beasts, solving their puzzles, fighting back the Blight with inside, it was all a lot of fun. Not the, not the boss, the Blight, the, the evil corruption that exists because of Ganon's presence. Um, it was a lot of fun. And that doesn't even take into account exploring the overworld. When I mentioned earlier you can increase the size of your inventory, you can find Koroks all across the world, little critters from Wind Waker, and they'll give you a Korok seed. Give a certain number of these to another Korok and he'll increase one of your inventory of your choice. This, this allows you to explore. I don't like that you have to get so many fucking seeds, but it does allow you to explore. You can explore this vast world. You can find the shrines. You can find the Korok seeds. You can find Link's memories. You can find um, 
different types of wildlife and vegetation and shrooms. Holy shit, the shrooms! And you can you can you can do so much in this game, and it's so much fun. And there's side quests, and I really like this game. I really do. It has its issues, but hot damn, is Breath of the Wild good? <laughs> I've said some good, I've said some bad. If you have yet to play Breath of the Wild, and you have a Wii U or a Switch, I really can't help but recommend you get a copy of it. Like, this is non-negotiable. If you like Zelda, why don't you have this yet? Alright? If you've got a Switch or a Wii U, please get Breath of the Wild. Because you're going to have fun. You're going to have so much fun. The game is huge. There's tons of shit to do. Tons of things to see, tons of enemies to kill, tons of puzzles to solve, and a great story with some great characters. And I hear that the DLC opens up even more. It's gonna apparently it's gonna increase the backstory for the champions. I look forward to that. I'm probably gonna get the DLC when my Joy Cons get back, or I get a Pro Controller. Hell, I might go buy a Pro Controller and then just buy the fucking DLC. I don't know. I get paid Friday. When it comes down to it, this game is fantastic. It has its problems. No game is perfect. But overall, the good outweighs the bad. I love this fucking game. And I think you will too. You really need to give Breath of the Wild a chance. If you have a Switch or a Wii U, get Breath of the Wild. You will not regret it. It is so much fucking fun. So, now that I'm done talking, number one, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm sorry for the lack of content. If I can, I, I was doing a video every day. If I can, I'll go back and try to do a video at least once a week because I understand it probably sucks for you guys being subscribed to me, there being nothing new on the channel. I apologize again, but things happen. I'll try to go do a video a week. If I do any type of Let's Play content, that can be daily because I'll just upload all that shit at once and pop them out whenever. But, um... I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something out of it. If you do have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, what's your favorite aspect of it? Do you like just exploring? Do you like the puzzles? Is the combat your thing? You know, what was your favorite divine beast? Because mine was hands down the giant elephant. I just thought that one was fucking cool. And, of course, the spoilers I talked about. What is your favorite part of Breath of the Wild? <sighs> I was fighting that yawn for a minute there. <clears throat> what is your favorite part of the Breath of the Wild? And do you think that I'm going to enjoy the DLC? Do you think that I'm going to enjoy, enjoy the ending? When I do eventually beat Breath of the Wild, I'll do another video and give my definitive thoughts on it. But overall, Nintendo did it good. This game is great. It's a lot of fun. It's beautiful. The world is massive. And I can't help but enjoy it, even when it has so many little nickel and dime issues. It's a great fucking game. I don't think it's a 10 out of 10 masterpiece like some people say, but I do think it's a masterpiece in its own right. If I had to give The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild a number rating, which I never do because I'm not a fucking idiot that does that bullshit, if I had to give it a number rating, I'd say that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a solid 9 out of 10 because it's got so much going for it, and I've enjoyed it so thoroughly. And while, I, while I'm thinking about it, I remember at one point... One of my new subscribers and one of my new buddies, Devil Dog. I don't know if you've even watched this video, but I'm fucking mentioning you. He had commented and said that eventually I would hate Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I can say, as of right now, I have mentioned the problems with it. Don't get me wrong. As of right now, I don't hate this game. I fucking love it. And that just shows the different tastes. He didn't enjoy it. I do. But, I mean, he enjoyed Resident Evil 7 and I didn't. It's just different strokes for different folks. When it comes down to it, you just got to get along with that bullshit. And we can't always do that. But, you know, Devil Dog, Nathan, if you're watching this, so far I have fucking thoroughly enjoyed Breath of the Wild. I think it's fucking fantastic. And, you know, I, I understand you're giving your Switch away because you did your, your big giveaway thing. So I hope that, uh, you know, whoever gets your Switch eventually gets Breath of the Wild, plays it, and loves it. Because <laughs> it's fucking amazing. If you happen to have another Switch or you ever get another Switch, give Breath of the Wild another shot because I'm eventually going to have to play Resident Evil 7 again. Because that Not A Hero DLC is out, isn't it? Fuck. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you hated this video and you hope that desperately I'll wander into a cold area of Breath of the Wild without the protective gear on and freeze to death, dislike the video. 
I'm sorry again for the lack of uploads, and I hope you guys can forgive me. But when it comes down to it, I've just been going through a lot of different stuff right now. Not necessarily the worst stuff in the world. I've been sick, my mother needs taken care of, and I've been working. But overall, life's been good. It's just been busy. But I'll try my best to get on to doing some videos, because I still got a lot of stuff I need to talk about. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up comment, show me that your support is still there, and it'll encourage me to do more stuff for you. I, 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 I'm sorry again. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm just going to have to sit here, and I'm not using that fucking dock. So I'm probably going to try to buy a Pro Controller unless someone sends it to me. No one's going to send it to me, though. It's Christmas, but I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> They're so goddamn expensive. Oh, fuck. How much is the DLC for Zelda as well? Christ. It's Nintendo, so I'm hoping 20 bucks. I don't know, though. I really don't. Thanks for watching. I'm going to turn the camera off, and I'm probably going to go back to playing Final Fantasy XII on the PS4. Take care, everybody.